Welcome back to the channel, Racer X here. And today I'm back with my good buddies at Clay Cooley Dodge Jeep Chrysler Ram in Irving, Texas. Because today I want to talk a little bit about the Dodge Charger. I haven't done a video like this. I want to give you a little bit of history and some unique facts about the Dodge Charger that make it pretty darn special. It should be a pretty fun one. Also, guys, I know that only about 20% of you are subscribed to my channel. If you have not subscribed already, please do me a big, gigantic favor. Hit that subscribe button located right down here in the bottom. I've got so much fantastic content planned for this year and going into next year. And so without uh, any further ado, here we go. So a couple key things to talk about when you really think about the history of these Dodge Chargers. The very first year for these cars was actually back all the way in 1966. And the base price of one of these guys was $2,850, which would be like $22,000 by today's standards, but still cheaper than what you see these things priced at now. And of course, as we know, we have five different engine trims available on these things. If you include the, both the Hellcat and the Hellcat Red Eye, which has a bigger blower on it, a lot of different trim levels available now, but there also used to be a lot of trim levels, even back, say, in like 1960. 68. They had a slant six. They had a uh, they had a 318 available in this, a 383, a 426, and a 425 horsepower uh, V8, 440 cubic inches. Uh, that that is really impressive when you think about how long ago that was. And that's actually uh, 55 more horsepower than today's current RT, and only about 60 less than the current 6.4 uh, SRT. Or actually, I should say the Scat Pack, which it is now, but. Uh, still a very impressive power figure out of that car and uh, they had three and four speed manuals in that car so a lot of people are completely unaware of how much power they made all the way back going into the 60s on these things so another little factoid, today's current Charger, the modern day Charger wide body, uh, that's available in both a Hellcat and a Scat Pack, it is 78.3 inches wide. It is the widest Charger that has ever existed and you can still buy them. Definitely a cool fact there. So another little cool fact that I found, the 1969 Dodge Charger 500, which is a pretty rare spec, actually only weighed 3,671 pounds. It was only $4,641 from a base price perspective, and it went zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds. I mean, that's actually not bad even by today's standards when you really think about it. And it ran the quarter mile in 13.4 seconds, which was almost unheard of back in that time frame. So a very impressive car back all the way in 1969. That was really a fantastic uh, time period for these uh, Mopars. So something else that's kind of interesting about these Chargers is that they actually went 17 years and didn't make a Charger. Basically from 1988 all the way up until 2005, they didn't make a Dodge Charger, which is kind of cool. A lot of people did not know that. So essentially 17 model years they missed out on basically through the late 80s all the way through the 2000s. And uh, of course, before uh, 1988, uh, they had uh, all two-door vehicles. So the Charger was a two-door up until they went into a hiatus for 17 years. And then starting back in 2006 with that model year, they went to a four-door version of the Charger. Definitely an interesting fact there. So as I mentioned before, this particular one, while it has the same Pentastar as the SXT trim, this one is a GT. But we do have the base trim, which is the SXT in the V6, the lowest level trim charger that you can actually buy. A lot of people don't even know what SXT stands for. It actually stands for Standard Extra, which is a little strange to me. It's almost like, uh, like jumbo shrimp or something. It seems like an oxymoron Standard Extra, but that's what it means. And then you go up to like the RT, which of course means road and track and so forth and so on. But a lot of people don't know what uh, SXT actually stands for. So go figure. So something else that I was even a little oblivious to was the fact that like in the 1980s, which were pretty much a really sucky time for car people, just from a horsepower perspective and the stuff that was out there, there just really wasn't all that much out there in terms of really cool cars. I mean, it's just kind of a weird era in uh, in automotive history. But uh, the, the fifth generation Charger was actually just 
in my opinion, a little bit weird. It was like a three-door hatchback that made like 146 horsepower, like the 1984 uh, Charger. I'll actually show you a picture of it. Um, it wasn't very attractive in my mind. Maybe some people loved them. Uh, they were a turbocharged car, but um, just almost made no horsepower, and they really did look very strange. So uh, go figure. Now, one other thing I wanted to bring up was about the uh, the Scat Pack. And of course, like I said, I have a Hellcat and a GT here. I don't have a Scat Pack with me. But as we know, that's that naturally aspirated 6.4 liter Hemi, the bigger Hemi, and uh, been very popular since they came back out with the Scat Pack. But that thing actually came out in 1968. And the whole thing with the Scat Pack, it was basically a play on Sinatra's Rat Pack, so to speak. In order to qualify for Mopar's Scat Pack, you had to run a quarter mile of 14 seconds or better and they had four different cars that would do it one of which was the iconic charger rt b stripes are a sign of danger and the bumblebee stripes tell the competition that this charger is part of the scat pack and it's not afraid to show you its taillights so the charger rt back in 1968 was one of the four that made up the scat pack so little history for you there now, I could probably go on and give you lots of little facts about the Dodge Charger just for days. It's a pretty neat car. Uh, really, the biggest thing and the thing I really want to end on is when you talk about American uh, sedans, especially when it comes to performance sedans, there's really not much out there when you compare it to the Charger. Like I said, this thing has been around in the four-door version since 2006. And when you think about some of the other stuff that's been out there from an American perspective, like the Taurus uh, SHO, maybe the Chevy SS, I mean, there's been a few others but they all come and they all go and out the window they go the charger has had a lot of staying power now for what like 17 years going on and on and it continues to be a big seller in the performance sedan market now i realize there are other things out there when like when you talk about imports like bmws and mercedes and stuff like that yeah they do exist but they're a lot more expensive uh, than these are so when you talk about power per dollar in american sports sedan this guy is one of the best performing uh, sedans really of all time when you look at that criteria. So that is a huge, huge factor uh, when you really think about the success of the Dodge Charger. All right, guys, well, that is about it. I just wanted to bring up a few things that maybe you were not aware of with the Dodge Charger. It is pretty cool, like I said, dating back all the way into the 60s. A lot of heritage here. We're on our seventh generation since 2011. And then, of course, if they ever do a remodel, that'll be the Generation 8. So this thing has had a lot of staying power over the course of time, a lot of different looks. But uh, you know what? It's neat to know the history, especially if you love a Charger. Um, you got to kind of know your stuff. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think about it in the comments down below and i'll catch you on the next one so until then racer x